What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I need to come up with a new intro ASAP. But today I'm doing a video that continues from the last video where I showed you guys a run that Moonshine and I made. I said that I was going to do a how I prepare my horse for a barrel race video. So today I have day number one for you as well as a horse trailer tack room tour. And also right now I'm going to take the time to just sit down and talk to you guys about the horses that I have, what my plans are with Moonshine and what my plans are with the other horses that I have right now and then plans for the future and stuff like that because I want you guys to be able to follow along on this journey with me so I want you guys to know what's happening and what my goals are. I don't want to be the type of person that hides that side of my life just because of the what if like what if I don't accomplish that or whatever it may be because I feel like that is exactly why I'm doing this so that I can show you guys when things don't work out for me or when they do so you guys get like a sense of relativity with my journey and it makes you think about what you're going through and especially for those of you who are going through hard times to help you realize that you're not the only one going through hard times and no matter who the person is what they say what they have in their life whatever they go through difficult times too and it's all in how you react to those difficult situations is what defines your quality of living okay so as far as my goals and stuff go the horses that I have right now are only moonshine and legacy moonshine most all of you guys have heard of if you've been following me she is my pride and joy and a horse that I've had for five years now i got her as a green broke horse she was four years old and since then i've trained her in the barrels and finished her i'm planning on starting her in the breakaway pretty soon but i'm gonna get into more information about my goals with moonshine because she's pretty much like what encompasses what i want do you guys see this bruise here gnarly bro i'm not even sure how this happened Okay. But Moonshine, in my eyes, is the foundation of my career and my empire and what I want all of that to entail and look like. In my eyes, she is going to be the horse that is going to take me farther than any other horse has and I'm going to go as far as she lets me. And no matter how well Moonshine does or how far she goes, I still want babies out of her. My goal in life is to have my own line of barrel horses. And in that line of barrel horses, I really want them to come from Moonshine. No matter if she can eventually be... I don't know if this is going to be a problem, the wind thing. No matter if she can eventually be an NFR horse or not, I am not sure. But I know that her babies, if I bred them right, that they definitely could because she has a perfect mind for it. She is very athletic and she is built really nicely. Like I said, even if I don't think she can make it to the NFR, I do think she can go really far. If I bred right with the babies, I think I could have a really nice barrel horse line. But yeah, Moonshine is the foundation of pretty much everything. <laughs> I don't spoil her, but I just make sure that she knows that she is loved and she is appreciated. But yeah, yeah, that's pretty much my goals with moonshine to have babies out of her and just to let her go as far as she wants and to push her to her fullest potential and no matter how far we go i will just always adore her the next horse i have is legacy and if you guys saw on my instagram like a month ago or so i did a giveaway to choose her name and one of my followers actually chose her name and chose legacy i thought it was so fitting for us and for her so as far as the story of legacy goes she was a little bit out of my budget and honestly a broodmare in a baby isn't something that I thought would be a next year thing it would be a goal that I had for the next five years or something like that so after talking to my boyfriend for a little while we came to the conclusion that this was actually a really good idea and this would give us the opportunity to be able to breed moonshine and to have a baby out of her in 2019 she's doing really good right now we have ridden her a couple times she is fresh very fresh she hasn't been ridden in like five years and because she's a broodmare I don't really know what I'm gonna do with her or like where I'm gonna take her if I want to actually make her into a barrel horse or something like that. I'm not really sure. But either way, we're gonna have a moonshine baby in 2019. And did I mention moonshine is getting bred to an own son of highbrow cat. I'm gonna have a moonshine and Sly Cooper baby that Legacy is going to carry and basically be its mom. So even though it's only two years out, I'm still doing a lot of research on how to train and start colts and everything like that because I want to do this so right and this baby is going to be such a little superstar. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started into this day one of how I get prepared for a barrel race video. So this video that you guys are watching is when I first get on her and I'm feeling her out and I'm making sure that she's not sore still. And then at the end of the video, I'm giving you guys a horse trailer tack room tour. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Slide, 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 okay. <laughs> She doesn't book. <laughs>
Okay, so that time was honestly pretty good. That was way better than the initial practice that we had yesterday. She didn't even throw a buck today, which is usually how she is. Yesterday with her throwing buck. Okay, yesterday with her throwing bucks, I wasn't sure if it was because she was sore, because that isn't something that she regularly does. But then I also remembered that she was off for close to a month, and I also had her on this new diet that included a lot more grain. So she is kind of chubby right now. If I ever give her a day off, the first day back is gonna be pretty rough. And then the next day back is literally like, we didn't take a break at all. So that's how she was today. So I'm gonna get on her and see how she feels. I'm just gonna do a lot of long trotting because she is getting pretty chubby. It's okay, we all have those moments. Let's get to it. so I can just feel her out. I'm going to continue to long trot her a little bit and see how she feels. Just get a good workout on her for today and then we'll build from there. that good for today's session she does feel better than she did yesterday so I'm thinking with warming her up and walking her out it does make her feel a little bit better but we're just gonna continue to build a little bit every day if there's one thing that I learned with moonshine is that baby steps pays off so we're gonna continue this tomorrow I'm on my way out to a lesson with one of my OG lesson kids Sierra I am bringing moonshine I love when I'm able to bring moonshine to my lessons because my arena at the house is pretty small and I come out here to the fairgrounds and to be able to work on this big open space and on a big pattern of barrels is really good. I'll probably make a barrel run once, but other than that, I'm not gonna get her hyped up and crazy. I'm just gonna work on making sure that her mind is sound and that she is calm and collected and listening to me well. I can't really video myself a whole lot when I'm doing the lessons, but I am gonna video Sierra on some of the drills that I'm gonna do with her because they are the same exact drills that I would do with Moonshine. So I'm gonna show you guys how she's working them on her horse and then how I'm explaining the drill to her. And so I can show you guys what I look for when I do the drill or when I have my lesson kids do the drill. So, so let's do the thing. Sit down. Come on. Tighten up that approach a little bit and let her go. Relax everything. Push your hands forward. Good job. Make sure she has lots of shape before she gets to this barrel. So you're already halfway done with your turn. More on the back side. Push her out. It's all right. So in order to avoid that stutter stepping, push her out of the barrel a little bit more so you have room to make that turn. Push her out. That's better. Come on, look around. Bump her with your outside leg. Way better, Sierra. Stop. Look at that. That is some lineage. Yup, that looks good. Oh yeah. We can set some poles. A 
Okay, so while I have some time, I'm gonna do a little tack room tour of my tack room, which is currently just a tack room in my horse trailer. But yeah, so I thought I'd show you guys around. I just organized it not too long ago because it was kind of a mess, and then now it's kind of become a mess again. So let's start with the door. Up here, I have paints and stuff. When I went to SSIR, I really loved painting my horses. I haven't done it in a really long time, but it was a really fun thing to do. So I always keep it in here. Look how old it looks. Probably wouldn't even stay on the horses anymore. And then I put all of these metal brushes up here just so they're out of the way and they're not poking me. And here is a bunch of just random stuff. I have like a horse tape and then just some other random papers and stuff. Here are just some regular random tools. We use these for the goats. And then I don't really know why those are in there. Um, and here I have my belt and my bracelet. There's not really any particular reason why they're in here, but they just ended up in here. And then when I was organizing, I was like, well, that's pretty cute to have like a little jewelry thing area. I have some more like medication type stuff, fly spray pills, um, electrolytes. And then I also put my bell boots, my main bell boots in here, puff pick and butte. And then I also put the brushes up here on this top thing. I don't really have a whole lot of brushes and stuff like that right now, but once I add to it, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this area. I'm hoping to find more storage, like to be able to put crates and stuff up there so I can have more storage, but I don't really know at the moment how that's all gonna play out. So walking into the trailer, we can start with this wall. My dad put those hooks up there for me for the bridles and stuff like that, but I don't really need them because I don't have that many bridles and when I have hooks over here, I don't really know. And there's not very much stuff that can actually hang up up there. So that's why I'm thinking if I had crates up here, then I could really fit a lot more stuff and it would be out of the way. Right here, I have this little thing. I used to put my split boots and bell boots all along this thing. And it actually worked out really well. But I didn't want my blankets to be on the saddle rack anymore. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is for anyway. This is my favorite saddle pad and what I use on Moonshine. It's by Cactus Saddlery. I got it at Nationals and it has lasted me a really long time. And I really like it for all of my horses that I ride. Then we got my saddle rack. This is what happened this morning after I tried to stack this top one. So that's something I'm gonna have to fix. But this is my roping saddle. This is what I use to break away anti goats off of. I really like this saddle and I really like it for just regular riding. Under here is my barrel saddle and it looks so squished right now. And then right here is my brother saddle. Yeah. Under here, I have water jugs. These come in really, really handy for when I go to rodeos because I can just fill them up when I'm at home and then I can just have water for them and I don't have to go find a faucet or anything like that. And it's also really nice when I'm just on the road. When I went to Texas, filling up these things was really convenient. We could just stop at a gas station or something like that and fill up waters for the horses. Yeah, love those. Chair, pretty random. We've never used that. I don't know what that's for. This is for if I ever get in a sticky situation, according to my dad. Yeah, but he's given me that and those things just in case I get a flat tire or something like that and I need to replace it on the side of the road. That way I'm safe and that way it's convenient. Great. Little Maggie's being so good. Look at you. Okay, now moving to this wall right here this is where i moved all of the split boots and stuff like that and i am still deciding if i like it i really don't at all because they don't go on straight and i want it to be organized i don't want it to look like crap so that kind of looks like crap to me right now so i'm probably going to try to relocate them to the bins that i'm thinking about doing up here or something like that because no. Okay, now moving on to this fun side. In this bag right here is where I have all of my polo wraps and stuff. I also have other polo wraps behind here. I don't usually use polo wraps that often, so these ones are pretty much brand new, but I keep them. I just never know when I'm going to use them, and I don't want to get rid of them, so. This is my goat string. I definitely don't use this as much as I used to, but I had to get another one because with my lesson girls that are goat tires, I want to tie with them, so I have to have my own shoe. Ow. This is a goat steak that is broken. I don't really know why this is in here either. This is what I used to use for goat tying for a whip. My dad made like 16 of these out of just regular rope. And then he put electrical tape all the way down to the bottom. So I had this little end. And he made me a bunch of them because when I tied goats, I used a whip on my horse. And then I would always drop my whip. And then I would always forget to go get it. And yeah. 
He made me a bunch of them so I would never run out of whips when I always forgot them. This bridle is actually pretty cool. This one is my mom's and it goes with the saddle that she has had since she was 16 years old. It's been my mom's forever and it's really pretty on the side here because you can tell this is all real silver. This is a really pretty head stall too. This I got for Christmas one year. I also have this, which I don't really remember where this came from. This one back here, also not sure where it came from, but I really like this raw hide accents on the side. This one was Moonshine's first bridal. This was Moonshine's second bridal. And you can see right here, I bought it as a regular black head stall at the NFR. And then I got these conchos for the top of it. The first one is lost. I ended up painting the sides of it to match this breast color that I also got for her at the rodeo. And then this last head stall is what I currently use on Moonshine. I really think it is so pretty. I bought it as a regular white head stall. I painted it all these crazy colors. But yes, this is currently Moonshine's head stall. So that wraps up my trailer tack room tour. Keegan and I have some really cool goals and plans of what we're gonna do with this horse trailer. And I feel like I need to be like providing inspiration to this world. So I'm feeling really inspired to inspire you guys. So if this trailer tack room tour gave you any inspiration or you just liked it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Pecos wants to be a part of the outro. Yeah, he is so heavy. Oh my goodness. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Wow, <laughs> that rolled off my tongue. And I will see you guys in part two of how I prepare my barrel horse for a barrel race video. Say bye. And I think to myself, what a wonderful